All right, guys, let's continue. I actually beat the freaking uh, try beater once, but I just couldn't stop cursing. <laughs> so let's try to do it civil so it stays on YouTube properly <laughs> without <coughs> ugly words or bad words. Okay, now let's see. All right. Yeah. What is this? No sign of the cub. Mm -hmm. But there is hex power here. Perhaps the echo of these seals the stranger mentioned. The ones they use to shield the sarcophagus. Yeah, it's hard. It's freaking hard. Ah, and I feel like this doesn't work versus that guy. Because immovable should keep you in your feet but he keeps knocking them down and uh, yeah we'll have to see if i can beat him now uh, in the first because it was i fight i fought him three or four times i just reloaded it and fought him again and again and two times i won two times he killed me, my party uh, two times he killed my party just when I was about to f apply the finishing move, so he had by under 500 hit points, stuff like that. But he spawns a ton of skeletons, man, and they are quite tough. These guys that are moving and twitching around here. Look at them. This guy also. See? This guy will rise up and uh, they will help the tribeater. And after I killed it, I stopped. Uh, so. Let Tusks. Where is the part of the cub? Someone must have taken it. Or that tribeater was the cub after all. Akrog thinks not. They look different. There is a time window nearby, though. Maybe they can. Big blood. What is it? No, I. No, I feel not well. Something is here. Something is. Yeah, let's save at this point. Let's save. Let's hope I can get Kill him it. now. Kill it. Come on, man. Still knock them down. He, they were in uh, that enemy. thing. Look out, bone people! Look at this bitch. Look at this bitch. Look at him. Look at him. And he goes there, and then he. Mo Yeah, they might not help him. What can he do for the tribe? I don't know. Did I? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. May Magwa guide his hands. Get it, let's hope we can. Okay, we were lucky we left those guys and uh, they can see. Let's try to. Okay. Oh my god, man. We were a bit lucky because we succeeded in freezing those guys over there and then we moved here and they are too dumb to follow. Oh no. 
but my people are dumb also so at some point uh, in one of the tribes this guy died he is going okay he was over here the tribe eater was over here and he just stood there he didn't get aggro it was quite close he will lead the way so a lot of issues with the unit AI uh, on both sides, enemy or... Uh... Moving now. Let Akrog see. Its chest. Its... It glows. Could that be? Trusted one. Cut him open. Now. Sure. A great way to end a great day. Oh man, it isn't your first hunt and how would you call that? Okay, I didn't look too good at it. Heals. Another trinket of healing. <laughs> I think this is the best thing in the game, man. To have two of these, but I don't know if uh, the cooldowns cancel each other. If you use it once have to try it and it's only the left arm okay we still have one arm two legs one head basically so it's a long way there <laughs> well may his tusks fall off that is an arm from the cub the field dog what by mug was glistening utters was it doing inside the tribe eater's body that makes no rotten sense. Zaska is right. Maybe the Hierophant... Wait! Chieftain, look! The time window. Touching the arm must have yeah. made it appear. Open it then. Maybe this way they can understand what happened here. I think he ate the arm, basically. Ready. In order to keep it. He transformed into the... But what are these, though? At his service. Did we get this one? Mm. Let's get all the cash because we might need it. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, over there also. That way. Ah, uh, let me get something for the screensaver facing for the thumbnail okay this should be enough all right let's hear it i actually didn't uh, hear the last one is everything well your reverence <laughs> you've been staring at the creature for a while we killed her lara it's our fault Garlia died. What do you mean? It was that traitor. No. He only dealt the killing blow. We led her to the gallows. Your husband was right, you know. It was a losing battle from the start. Because we put too much faith in our virtue and too little in our power. I don't understand, Your Reverence. Come. We should go back upstairs, then we can... We will never be able to contain this beast. Even torn apart and shielded with duality magic. It's just too... fucking smart. Guards! Guards! <laughs> what? You think I'm the villain now? Oh, you sorry little fool. The light races will never win. At least not if we keep fighting the way we used to. We worry about honor, faith, and ideals, whereas all they care about is one thing, winning. And that's what really matters. I will consume the power of the field dark. There is no need to keep it trapped here. I will siphon its essence. And when I'm done, these disgusting parts will be nothing more than rotting flesh. You're mad, Shara. No one can control the field dark, even you. You're... I already took care of the torso, so I think I can handle a cursed arm. But first, it's your turn. No! Don't! No! This I'm sorry, sister. 
Your sacrifice will be remembered. Now, by whom? Show me what you have. I. I can't. <laughs> no. 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 You can't. You can't. was that? What did they just see? The Hierophant. She was the demon. What? It is true. The Hierophant. She must have tried to leech the Field Dark's power. But he was stronger and turned her into this... this beast. Yeah, it was obvious. Okay. The temptation of power. What by Mogwa made her think she could control it? The field dog is a demigod. She was a brittle bone, <coughs> a powerful one. But Akrog speaks true. It was a foolish idea, and she got what was coming to her. And then wiped out the entire temple as a demon. Brittle bones call this irony. So the field dog took control of her. Mm, at least this is what it looked like to Grangwa. She allowed the field dog's hex power into her mind, hoping she could dominate it. But instead, it dominated her and turned her into that. <laughs> no, I'd never want to be turned into something else. <laughs> Zazka would. Something less beautiful for the sake of the Moonkin's doze. She also spoke of someone getting killed, no? Galia, it is true. Maybe some other warrior of her tribe. Hmm. Hmm. But they saw her do something similar to the torso in the time window, no? If she could siphon the strength from the torso, why not from the arm? She siphoned the other priestess too. But as to the chieftain's question, Granwa knows not. Maybe she was strong enough to hold one part of the cub's power, but not two. Or the cub tricked her into believing she could do it. Or that. <sighs> the field dog corrupted the shaman when she touched the arm. Will it corrupt the moonkin too? Granwa knows not. He hopes not, unless they let it into their heads. But how can they know? But Grungwa has said his peace. He thinks this is dangerous. But if the chieftain still believes this is a good idea, he will bow to his word. After all, he is right. They have little choice. Huh. Look at that. An old brain can see sense after all. Grungwa understands why Zaska hates him now. He has every right to. But let this hatred not affect the strength of the tribe. The Moonkin need to stick together, now more than ever. Well, tell that to his trusted one, Nurbok. Grungwa is right, trusted one. There will be time to talk about this another day. Let them explore some more. Then return to the temple. The kin must have set up the tribe camp by now. Can Zaska help? Yeah, I just want to make sure I didn't lose anything over here. That's it. Uh, I guess we'll take the long way there. Head towards certain doom. Sure, why not? Okay. That's not too much. No, so I think we sold everything. So I don't know why this. Uh, this doesn't show, even though I have them in my inventory. Like uh, these offerings, this. See? Maybe they will show when I reach that place. Mm. 
All right. Mm -hmm. This was hard until I learned how to beat him fast. No. So by the way, the chief was. Uh, I told you earlier that he was sitting here. He was sitting here, and he wasn't on defensive mode. He was on aggressive mode, and he simply didn't react to the enemy right over here, in his sight range. So I don't know about that, guys, but maybe you could make them more aware. Uh, this doesn't carry to the other map. This looks interesting. Let's see if anything has changed over here. Doesn't seem to. Okay. <sighs> Let's teleport there. Ready for action. I think we collected uh, quite a lot. Now I didn't pay attention to much on what the last thing was, so we had trinket. The target is not epic. Yeah, so it's it's actually there are actually too many spells available man in the combat you could see i was getting confused sometimes i had to make quick decisions to recognize the spell i wanted to use i had a few over here that i wanted to use a lot more uh, like this one i wanted to place it versus the undead just we need a ton of focus and actually never gave this guy focus during the fight. Mm. Yeah. Moving now. The stress. The stress of the combat, Let I guess. Take a closer look. Yes. The four trolls marched in silence as they returned from the hex gate, carrying the arm of Zarek's cub between them. Too strong were the memories of their first journey into the many temples of the Sacred Seal. Yeah, we heard this once. Okay. It reacts. Still looks like dead meat to Zazka. No, the stranger is right. The hex power here, it changed. It is more um, alive now. Hmm. And the stranger really thinks this is going to work. The Moonkin just find all the pieces. The stranger casts his little hex, and the cub will walk again. Oh, trust me, there's nothing little about that hex. But yes, that seems to be the method. But in order to do that, we need to break the other three seals first. And for that, they will need to find their dark echoes. Correct. Now, we got lucky on Hirin's seal because the bones contained the exact echo we needed, and the portal was right there for you to compare it with. The other ones aren't going to be that easy. That said, I have done some thinking while you were gone. This mask goddess still remains a mystery. But I have solid theories on Shana and Nihalf, the patrons of the other two shrines. Which one would you like to hear first? Finding these dark echoes will take the Moonkin a lot of time and strength. Is there no other way to break the seals? If there is, it's beyond our capabilities. Keep in mind, even the sacred seal themselves who created these portals used an echo shaper to open them. I will keep thinking, of course, but for now I believe this is our best course of action. We know there are keys, and we have clues as to what they look like. We just need to find them. So the Moonkin cannot know for sure which echo they need. I'm afraid not. But again, we have hints, so even though failure is a possibility, it's not like we'll be firing arrows into the dark. Only into the twilight. Chieftain Akrog, you have a poetic streak. Poetic? Never mind. Akrog has been thinking. Each guardian is the patron of more than one thing, no? 
So is there more than one Dark Echo for each of them? That's correct, there must be. Though some of them will certainly be harder to find than others. Let's take Hirin. He also represents the Passage of Souls. Good luck finding a Dark Echo for that. They should look for simple Echoes, then. Exactly, but I've done that already. Who could this masked goddess be, though? If she is a guardian, then she must be known. Well, I assumed the same thing. But I went through all my books, and there's absolutely nothing. Ellen is sometimes depicted with a hood, but I doubt that's enough to call her a masked goddess. This is bad, then. If they cannot break her hex gate seal, it matters not if they break all the others. I'm aware, and I'm doing my best to solve that problem. This place is brimming with Hibernian writing, so there's got to be more information somewhere. Which brings me to a little request. If you find any Hibernian writings on your quest, bring them to me. Even if it tells us nothing about the masked goddess, the more we know about the sacred seal, the better. They can do that. All right. Tell them about Shana. Who is she, and what could her dark echo be? That one's fairly simple. Shana is also known as the Gentle Hand and the Mother, and she's the guardian goddess of maternal love, kindness, compassion, and homes. I think the dark echo we should focus on with her is cruelty. As simple as a fist to the face. That's correct, but I see no value in focusing on the more complex aspects of her. Kindness and compassion against cruelty. It doesn't get any simpler than that. The stranger speaks true. Nihoff is the guardian of the tiny brittle bones, no? He's worshipped by many of the light races, but the dwarves are his most ardent followers, indeed. He's a bit tricky. Nihoff embodies craftsmanship, courage, honor, glory, and honesty. No like honest. I believe that. Now, I'm not sure how we're supposed to find the dark echo of craftsmanship, but the other aspects are simpler. Cowardice, disgrace, lies. They are easy to find. Even within the tribe. Beg your pardon? It matters not. Cruelty and cowardice. Where are the Moonkin supposed to find them? And therein lies the rub. If I were you, I'd start with cruelty, though. That should be easier to find. Maybe in a burning village, a freshly raided troll tribe camp. Or maybe you could even create it yourself. When you're there, just use your gift to feel for the Echo. Only you can decide whether it's the one we need. All right, Akrod will do what he can. He will look around the tribe camp first, though. Seems like everybody has settled in. We could also get back to the cradle or to the other map that we were. Uh, and that reminds me, I don't think I used those, did I? Okay, I did activate those uh, blueprints that I got. Okay, okay, okay. We might have a fight over here though, because we have uh, all kind of stuff over here. Mm, yeah, we will have something to defend probably. Okay. First thing I wanna do... Let me check the time. Yeah, I guess we will be talking this. Uh, what what do, you do you want? Mm, oh, everything all right, little blood? Oh, it, it nothing. No, I just think a lot, but. He not find answer. Well then, tell Akrog. Maybe he can help. 
All right, if Big Blood say it's about the hunters, no I understand not why they kill Moonkin. They know Moonkin, no? They know they have trusted ones, sires. <sighs> why they so bad? Both of them are uh, true. Because all they care about is their shiny stuff. They would probably kill their own trusted ones if it made them richer. Kill trusted one? What? Who do that? Little bones often do. That croc has heard many stories. Mm. That's so. Blood want else? That Rog wonders. Did Little Blood ever think about what he wants to be when he is older? Wants be? Hmm. He will have to choose a role when he cusps. It is still a few dozen moons off, but not that long. As no I ever thought about that. Hmm. Sometimes it is true. Noag think he want to be an eye. An eye? Why is that? No, oh, it just... Sire Nodjak like to hunt, no? Noag want to... Well... Honor him. <sighs> but that not all. He also just like it. Leaves, trees, wind, air. It make Noag... Happy. Also, he can see much this way. Interesting. Akrog always thought Noag would want to be a tamer or a healer like Krum. He spends so much time with him in the beaks. <laughs> what is funny? No, oh, just Noag want to be a tamer once. He even tell Crumple, and Crumple show him beak to show taming. It. Uh... It no go well. What happened? Well, <laughs> Grumble tell Noag to hold Beak gently, but Noag strong and well. The Beak died? No, 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 no. It just go squish a bit and fly away. But Noag no want to be a tailor after that. He not want to hurt Beaks. Maybe Little Blood just needs practice. Maybe, but no, 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 I'd be I. He go climb mountains and trees and hunt boars, then eat at night. <laughs> All right, then. No, eggs cusping is still a while off anyway. Don't forget, he's actually a child, um, an overgrown child. How feels little blood? <clears throat> Anything troubling him? Oh, just same as always. And what is that? Just dark thoughts. About tribe. About cub. About rot. Kin like Noag because he's so strong. But he worry he cannot shield them like he could not shield Sire. Sometimes he feel... What the word? Useless. Little Blood is not useless. Not at all. Big Blood only say that because they say blood. No, Akrog does not. If Little Blood were useless, would Akrog take him with them wherever they travel? He is one of the finest warriors the Moonkin ever had. And that before he is even old enough to hunt. Big Blood mean that? It is true. <sighs> Maybe he right then. That is all for now. Let them march on. Hmm. <laughs> mm. 
it's actually a good way to get some focus. to speak to our Krog. Right. It is... Uh, it feels a bit silly, but it is about the bloom Grangwa took. Magwa's tear. The one he wanted to plant in the tribe camp to last. It is true. To be short, Grangwa thought Magwa's power in that bloom would be stronger. Grangwa fears it is dying. <laughs> Mighty Mugwa cannot even keep a plant alive. How impressive. <sighs> Granwa believes there is something that can keep it alive, though. Crushed bone. If the Moonkin could keep an eye out for bones on their journey, Granwa would be grateful. Yeah, we have a, um, already a few. Akrog knows Mugwa's tears are sacred, but he understands not why this bloom is so important to Grongwa. It is just a plant. Grongwa... <sighs> Never mind. It was a foolish idea, and Grongwa should not waste the chieftain's time. Forgive him. Just speak true, Grongwa. What is it? It is... Uh... Grangwa is not who he used to be anymore, Chieftain. There are times when he wakes and wonders whose hide this is. Forty years ago, he could crush three brittle bones with one strike of his fist. Now, there are days when he can barely remember how to make his hexes anymore. He is not useless yet, but he knows that one day... He will be. He has not Narjak's firstborn blood, so he will not live forever. And this day, it gives Grungwa dark thoughts. He wants not to be, well, a burden. Oh no. So moving. Zazka's eyes are all wet. How old is Grongwar? He counted the years not. But when he was a cub, Chieftain Narjak was still a cub too. This is not true. Grongwar is a powerful warrior still. <laughs> he is not. Trusted one Nairbark is. But Grongwar is not. Every hex is harder than the last. Every strike is... Oh, well, why is he saying all this? The chieftain has other troubles. Akrog understands. But what have the tears to do with this? It is... Uh, and it is hard to explain. But when this old hide fails at last and Magwa takes Grangwa into the moonlit river, he would like to think that something of him remains with the tribe. Like a grove of Mugwa's tears. <sighs> a foolish thought, but it is true. Fine. They will keep an eye out. Grangwa thanks the chieftain. He truly does. It is fine. Now come. They have much to do. Mm. Mm, we do have some Where is that? It's a bag. We do have five. So we should give those to the stranger. Let's try to go to that uh, before we move along. What the can he do for the tribe? Let's try to put that thing, that tile over there. 
moving on. Oh, really? If he insists. You survived. You respawned. Maybe. Can I find a way? Maybe we should keep them here, though. We are good guardians, huh? One is not it. Hmm. I guess theoretically you could kill them for experience, but let's hmm. let a closer look. Let's leave them there. So I don't know how that plant can grow over here because this guy's influence is extremely bad. Who else is here? Who's this guy? Who's over here? Oh, the. Got to ask the chieftain first. Nurbach knows. He was just letting him know that they have options. Ah, oh, well. Speaking of Zarak. Hmm. Somebody said something. It passed him by. Okay, let's talk to this guy. Akrog, trusted one, Grungwa. Mugwa praise. Nurbok and Anuk were just speaking of something. Mugwa praise. Good work on setting up the tribe camp. Nurbok likes this place as little as trusted one Grungwa. But he must say, it is not a bad spot. Easy to defend. What spoke they of? The Moonkin have a problem. They are low on food, and there are almost no animals to hunt. No animals? The Blackheart jungle is right at the bottom of the mountain. It is true, Chieftain, but still. Anug's hunters come back from hunt earlier, and the only healthy game they find is two boar and one stag. All the rest is either dead or mad. That corruption the stranger spoke of. So it spreads across the entire jungle? Uh-huh. Whether it is the entire jungle, Anug cannot say. But as far as his eyes go... Speaking of corruption... What found Akrog behind the hex gate? Was there another part of the cub? <sighs> it is a long story. Hmm. Your box sees. So one dark echo for every hex gate, no? It is true. The stranger is still trying to find out who the masked goddess is, but he thinks the dark echoes for Shana and Nihav are cruelty and cowardice. If the Moonkin want to open the gates, they need to find them. But he thinks the dark echoes for Shana and Nihav a cruelty and cowardice. If the moon can want to open the gates, they need to find them. Dark Echo Hex Gates, Zarek's Cub. Mugwa's tusks, all this make a nug's head spin. What are Nurbach's thoughts on this? The field dog, the echoes, and the Brittlebone Temple. It matters not what Nurbach thinks. Akrog has spoken, so Nurbach bows to him. Nurbach. There is nothing to say. Hmm. Anug is the Eye Master. Has he any idea where they might find cruelty? Akrog's first thought was the Bog Tusk Tribe Camp. There should still be corpses mm -hmm. there. Bog Tusk Tribe Camp? Oh. Anug already ordered his eyes to scrap shelters there and burn the dead flesh. They is not kin, but Anug ought not to leave them there. Honorable. Then they need to look for cruelty somewhere else. Maybe the Brittlebone Village. That is what Anug and Nurbok were talking about. 
There is a big Brittlebone tribe camp, a village, a day's march north. The Moonkin should go there, crush the Brittlebones, and take their food. Simple. Hmm, good idea. If they raid it, they might even create some cruelty. Two beaks fed with one crumb. Are they slavers? Or tusk hunters? No. Then why kill them? Because it will save the tribe from starving like dogs. Tell Akrog more about this village. Who are they? I, Master Anug. Well, as Nurbak say, they mine things. Rocks and metal and scrap. Uh, besides that, they not look like warriors to Anug. Julog even say he think one of the Brittlebone guards see him. But he not attacked you long. <laughs> Scared, probably. <sighs> Nurbak. Grim as always. Hostile or not, a raid will cost Moonkin blood. Akrog wonders if there is no other way to get this food. They can try talk. And when has a brittle bone ever listened to a troll? The chieftain knows what they are like. The Moonkin are just animals to them. Mm-hmm. Grungwar knows that not. Zazka has no love for brittle bones, but they are not all the same. Just as not all troll kind are. Hmm. No. The Moonkin will try to peace talk first. Is Akrog so afraid? Only cautious. The Moonkin have lost over half their warriors over this rotten last moon. And Akrog will not risk any more lives than he must. Hmm. Fine. Then let Nurbok offer his crush dick. He and a pack of his best skull crushers will take care of this. Akrog thanks Nurbok, but he cannot accept. Why? Because Akrog is the only one who can sense the Dark Echoes. He must be there. He, Grunwar, Zazka, and Littleblood will travel to the Brittlebone camp and find food. If too many warriors go, the Brittlebones will see them from a distance. Akrog has spoken. Fine. Do what he must, Nervak. Charming as a fist of beak shit on a sleeping fur. As I, Master Anuk, any other ideas about this other Dark Echo? Cowardice. Um, no, not right now, but he think. Oh, and before the Chieftain March, he must talk to Shepherd Crumb and Master Scrapper Zeramak. It is about the wounded and the Moonkin weapons. All right, Akrog will speak to them when he finds the time. For now, the gathering is over. What has been keeping the eyes busy lately? The same as always, Anug would say. They take good care of the Moonkin, even if the Chief did not see them. Right now, some eyes is look for Greenskins and Brittlebones. Good. The tribe feels safer knowing the eyes are looking out for them. Hmm. Akrog just realized he never asked. How ended Anug up as the Eye Master of the Moonkin? How he end up as the Eye Master? Hmm. Probably just because he is the oldest eye that still live. It's a dangerous role, is it not? It is. But Anug won't have no other role. It's a great honor to be the eyes of the tribe. Probably one of the greatest. Hmm. Sounds like Anug is enjoying it then. Uh, enjoy is not the right word. But Anug, no, not a better one. He do what is need of the tribe of him. That is all. Can Akrog help the eyes in any way? Huh. Can he use one of those hexes to make more trolls? Anug can never have enough eyes, and there is so few of them now, and so many enemies. Akrog wishes it were that easy. Well, then there is nothing Anug can think of right now. How are the Moonkin's food supplies looking? Hmm. <laughs> Too low. Not because they is bad at look. 
but because there is no food to find. Mm, yes. That is what Akrog had heard. Have they searched the whole area? They look everywhere! It is long time since eyes find more than one animal at a time. And the beasts is all thin and sickly or wild like demons. The tribe cannot go on for long without the food that I, Master Anug's trolls provide. Akrog wishes them luck with finding as much as they can. Luck is nice, Chieftain, but it not help much. <sighs> Anug is right. Akrog hopes the tribe will soon be able to find a new home with as many creatures as they can hunt. He is trying to make that happen. Then it is Anug who wish luck to the Chieftain. And he also sent out an eye or two to see what they can find. Akrog thanks the Eye Master. He must go. Stay safe, Chieftain. Okay, I think we should make this a longer episode and talk to everybody and get every quest that we can at this point. Okay, and uh... What next? Who are you, sir? Do you still have stuff to talk about? Chieftain! Anog here they find the Master Scrapper. Not quite what he have in mind. Can he really shape good weapons? The best. Akrog thanks Anug for his advice. It was a good idea. Akrog thanks the Eye Master. He must go. Stay safe, Chieftain. Going now. Yeah, we found a Master Scrapper. But wasn't he in the village? Okay. Who are you? This looks interesting. Ah, Chieftain Magwa praise! Good of him to combine. He means come by, no? Eh, same thing. Eh, anyway, Zaramak means speak to Chieftain. He remember Cart Crumb speak of during Chainer battle? Chieftain hardly put much in there. Stone, wood, food. Zaramak disappointed. They needed it all for the battle. That all right, but still, Zaramak could have used to make tribes stronger. For next battle, Chieftain put think? things in cart, then tell Zaramak in tribe camp what he want to do with it. Everyone happy. All right, but we will I see what they can spare. It. Anuk said Zaramak wanted to talk about the Moonkin's yes. weapons too. Hmm, it true. Zaramak shame to say, but he think Moonkin need better weapons. They just not good enough. Why would you need new weapons? Come on, guys. Why would you need Why that? would the moon kid need <laughs> new weapons? Troll weapons are powerful. True, but only because arm that swing them is strong. Zaramak have no love for brittle bones, but Chieftain must say brittle bone weapons good. Very good. Better than trolls. Painful to hear, but true. What wants Zaramak to do? So, Zaramak think they should make weapons as good as Brittlebone if they want to survive. Problem, Zaramak cannot make them. So they need to find second scrapper who can. Would Zaramak not mind having a second scrapper in the tribe? One who is better at shaping weapons than him. If he be honest, no, he like not. But he also know good of tribe bigger than good of single troll. Strong word. Big blood always say the same thing. Then big blood very wise. Zeramak made Akrog a crush stick not long ago, and it crushes very well. And Zeramak happy to hear, but who say it cannot work better? Hmm. The tribe has enough mouths to feed. Can Zeramak not learn to shape weapons the Brittlebone way too? Zaramak wish he could, but no. It not that Brittlebone smarter, it because Brittlebone shaping hard to learn, take years. It is a fart, as Brittlebone elders say. Art. Zaramak means art. Ah, same thing. Hmm. But where can they find such a scrapper? Akrog doubts the Tusk Hunters would work for the Moonkin. True, but Zaramak have idea. He talked to Anu, and he tells Zaramak of smart brittle bone scrapper who live not far from temple, in shelter in the wild. Apparently, he shape all kind of things, weapons, traps, even creatures of iron that move all by themselves. 
And Ug also say that Brittlebone Scrapper have not left his shelter for moons, and no one know why. Zaramak think maybe Chieftain can convince him to help them. Mm -hmm. How is Akrom supposed to convince him? Brittlebones hate trolls. True, but he not shape weapon for brittle bones for years, so maybe he grow tired of kin? Zaramak no not. Also, if he listen not, Chieftain can just drag him here by his tusks. Teeth. Brittle bones have no tusks. Ah, same thing. Tell Akrog more about this scrapper. Well, Zaramak already say most. They say he very, very good. So good that even Brittlebone chieftains come to him to have him forge their weapons. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe the Moon King could also find cruelty there. Cruelty? Never mind. He said people made of iron? Hmm. Like what they call uh, gylems, golems, gullums. Right, them. They move and crush very strong. Hmm. All right. Akrog will look for this brittle bone scrapper. Good. Chieftain have map, no? Here, that where he should march. It'd take them half day to get there, but Zeramak sure it worth it. Sharp tusks and thick hide, Chieftain. Same to Zeramak. But I did load up that cart, man. The thing completed it. Completed. It. Uh, was complete back then, right? I remember I filled that cart. It's true I filled it with scrap metal back then, but and food. What? What was that? Just closed it. Okay, they took the food out of my inventory. Let's see what if we can. Uh... What on Urgath is this? What? Need to talk to Zaska. Zaska is weird. He might just get his revenge later. No, none of those stones uh, is the one that we need. Okay. Mm. They should come back here later. If Zaska has been thinking. Akrog should really put Nurbok in his place. Yeah. It is clear that he respects him not as a chieftain. Ah, the fool scolds. The wise troll acts. It is true, Nurbok has been acting strangely. But if Akrog just uses the chieftain's word, it will not change him. What? So Akrog should dance around Nurbok's pride? No, he should act like his sire would have. With a calm mind. Talk to him once the moon can have found their new tribe camp from troll to troll. Grangwa is sure there is a way to convince him. Hmm. Akrog will think about it. I'm fairly certain he will follow us follow us to that human village and start causing trouble. Uh, so I don't know how can I avoid that. Until I'm sure there can be no conflict. You know? I'm sure how the things will go with that town. Uh, I don't want him to start causing trouble. Rubble pile, what's this? And there was that worker around. Right. Was moving. We can't talk to him anymore. This is going to be a longer episode, but we are... Be glad to be useful. Mm. Yeah, let's talk to this guy and then we'll look this way. This? Oh, the flesh stinks. Crawl root juice. The brittle bones use it. Study them. Huh. Wonder what old brittle bone ways are curious. Has the flesh slowness in it, Chieftain? Mm, a lot. 
They should take a part. We took no a part. Rest? No, it is bad for the guts. We took Trust it. Akrog. It shouldn't be active anymore. Let Grunwa take a cursed, rotten, tuskless piece of rock. Julog wishes Mugwa would smash it with her udders. Mugwa prays, Tamer Julog, beak friend. Something the matter? Oh, a chieftain. Uh, he, he is um, back. Uh, Julog meant no disrespect to Mugwa. He... Julog must answer to Mugwa, not to Akrog. Let them hope she was not listening at this very moment. <laughs> what troubles Julog? Oh, it is this rock. A Julog thinks he heard iron beaks behind it, which the Moonkin could tame. Uh, but this thing just too heavy, and he cannot move it. Hmm. Looks like this would need some time and materials. Akrog will send some workers over to clear it. He would? Oh, that is, that is wonderful, Chieftain. Julog thanks him. What is good for the beaks and their tamers is good for the tribe. Sharp tusks and thick hide, Julog. Sharp tusks and thick hide. <laughs> uh, could, um, could he ask one more question? Hmm? That thing on the stone slab, is that... They know... It is Zarek's cub, it is true. The brittle bones cut him to pieces, and the Moonkin must restore him. Huh. Julog hopes it will be kind to the Moonkin, then. Just being close to that thing makes his tusks tingle. He is not alone in this feeling. They will be careful. That's it. Mm. But I'm fairly certain I... I did a lot. Do still need. I think it's enough. Chieftain did it. Julog, wait. Oh, curse it. Wait, Julog. Interesting. Probably. Oh, so Julog's ears tricked him. Not after all. Look at these beauties, Chieftain! Look at them! Mm, they sound very... angry. I'm hungry. Because the Moonkin barged into their nesting place, of course. But worry not, Chieftain. Just give Julog and Crum a bit of time with them, and they will be eating the grains out of Julog's hand. Any chance Zazka can get the bones of that hand? It would look nice around Zazka's neck. Not funny, small tusk. Come on, man. Useful. Mug more praise. Bit nice day. Not disrespected. <laughs> what does that can disrespected everybody? <laughs> mm. Let's help him. Julog will not disrespect trusted. Leave it be, Akrog. No point. These beaks look not like normal beaks. Think Julog they will be useful in battle. Oh, surely. In truth, Krom and Julog have been working on an idea. And these beaks might just be the right ones for it. Julog thanks the chieftain again. He thinks there are more rocks like this in the temple, maybe. He will order them cleared when the Moonkin have the materials. Sharp tusks and thick hide, Dulog. Don't think we have blanks, though. Do we? Work, work, work. Hmm. You what You're ready. Next time. What is that? <sighs> Is 
skilled scrapper. So we save it. We save it for Go now. All right, so over here we need to use our workers. Can we get everything I want? Okay, we have a memory over there. And this is lumber. We can turn it into planks. What now? More trouble. Okay. Heart of the tribe can wait stronger. Oh, we can actually research this. But is it required? I mean, that's interesting. That would actually be good. They cost Tony food. I don't know how many battles we have. I guess it's worth taking a few, right? Mm. No, we can't take everything, probably. I'm actually tempted to cheat to just to have them all. <laughs> Is there a cheat? I actually don't know. Probably there are, right? I'm a completionist and I do like to have everything researched when I play this kind of game. So we have scrap over here. I guess the cost uh, is increasing every time. But this would give us access to trees, theoretically, on top of those things, so I don't know. I don't actually know. Let's find a farm, though. It's only, only for the campaign. <laughs> Two monkey will go hunting doing twice of the, twice the work. <sighs> All are good and dandy, but how can we get that much food, man? Let's talk to that worker. What on Urgath is this? Yeah, we s seriously. I'm glad to see Ugruk made it here safely. Uh, it true. Ugruk here. Ugruk help chieftain. Need some work done. Ugruk can relax. Akrob just wants to talk to him. Uh, there is not much work for Ugruk in this place. Akrog will let Ugruk know if he thinks of anything. Ah, that okay. Ugruk keep busy. Ugruk look around. Uh, so messy here. Ugruk could fix it, but he not in fixing mood. Why not? Ugruk always work with Zorta. 
But Zorta gone now, not come back. <sighs> Zorta, of course. Akrog will make those brittle bones pay for every troll they have killed or taken. Uh, Ugruk, no, they will. Brittle bones took Zorta because of big tusks. Left Ugruk alone. His tusks, stumpy. Stumpy tusks never was good thing, but saved Ugruk's life. Akrog remembers Zorta's tusks. So strong and sharp. Zorta was right to be proud of them. Mm. Only Mugwa knows where Zorta is now. Ugruk thinks Zorta dead. Zorta sick when Brittlebones took him. Even if Brittlebones not kill him, Zorta die anyway. No Moonkin to help. Ugruk might be right. Such a waste of Moonkin life. He glad to be useful. Hmm. Perhaps Ugruk can help Akrog by reminding him of happier times. Hmm. That not easy. Mm. Oh, oh, Ugruk got it. Uh, that time when Ugruk and Zorta made new shelter for Elder Grafer? <laughs> Ugruk forgot to put door in it. It just stones and wood. No door. <laughs> Akrog can still see the look on Elder Grafer's face when he saw his new home. <laughs> Grafer was so angry, Akrog was worried he would twist Ugruk's tusks right off. Lucky Ugruk has stumpy tusks. Elder Grafer said he would make door using Ugruk's head, but Ugruk got away. He has a big Ugruk head fixed head. it though, not long after that. Elder Grafer's finished shelter was admired by all the Moonkin. It true? Ugruk and Zorta made many shelters together. Was fun to build. All gone now. <laughs> Even Zorta. The Moonkin will find their home again, somewhere. Then Ugruk can build all the shelters the tribe needs. In honor of Zorta and every troll the Moonkin has lost. Where are the others? Akrog has barely seen them since the Moonkin came here. Not many workers left now. So many taken by brittle bones. Were they all victims of the hunters? Most were, but some just got sick and never better again. Blood rot made them weak. If Troll got hurt, even small wound, he could not fight it. One worker cut his finger chopping firewood. A few days later, dead. Mm. Little wonder their numbers have dwindled. Mm. Akrog hopes a better time for all of them is on its way. Ugruk wanted to be like before, was happy tribe, strong. The tribe will be happy again, one day. It was good to talk with Ugruk. Now Akrog must go. Ugruk here if Chieftain need him. Okay. Let me check if I'm still recording, man. Okay. So we should put this, this guy in this place. No. I think the faster we Akrog can do it. Bone crusher. No back one eye. Mogwa praise. Akrog just wanted to tell Nurbok. It was the right choice to strike a pact with the stranger. Without the strength of Zarek's cub, the Moonkin will die. The Moonkin have survived for a thousand moons, but that was because someone great led them. But this is not even about Zarek's cub or this brittle bone hexer. Grungwa may whine about the traditions and Zarek abandoning the trolls all he wants. Nurbok cares for solutions. And Zaska is right. This might be one. Even if Nurbok is still hesitant to believe anything good could ever come out of that cuckoo's mouth. Zaske is a Moonkin. Chieftain Narjak decided so, and Zaske has done more for the tribe than many bloodkin. Disgrace Mugwa's name with his stupid jokes he mings? Tusks. Nurbok admires his trusted one's patience. This and Akrok's chieftainhood are the two things Nurbok and Grungwa will never agree on.
Why hates Nervak Akrog so much? Hate? <sighs> this has nothing to do with hate. Akrog should simply not be chieftain. But Nervak should. Nervak? Grunglaw? Tusks? Even Anuk would make a better chieftain than Akrog. Why thinks Nurbok this way? Because of what happened in the Cradle. Grungwar has said it. The moment the Moonkin let the Brittlebones crush their traditions, they- Nurbok knows what his trusted one says, and Grungwar is not all wrong in this. That is not what this is about. Akrog is simply too soft. He has known Akrog since Akrog was a cub, and it is true. All this spirit hearing, Grunglaw's pampering, all this undeserved admiration from the tribe simply because he is the firstborn's cub. Give the beak too much meat, and he will become lazy and weak-willed. Mark Nurbok's words. Chieftain Atrog, when the day comes that he has to make a hard call, he will not make it. Nurbok bets his tusks on it. Don't think he will accept. Akrog challenges Nurbok to a fight under Mugwa's eye. If he wins, then Nurbok will respect him. <laughs> no. Too much of a coward? Akrog can tell himself that. Nurbok will not fight him because he would crush Akrog's skull like a brittle bone head, and that would make Nurbok a kin slayer. And this tribe needs its great warrior still. So, if threats are all Akrog has to offer, he can go rot. I think we need him, but... Akrog has had enough of this nonsense. From here on out, Nurbok will respect Akrog's word as Mugwa's laws demand. If he respects it not, he will pay the blood price. Crude as a crush stick. See, that is why Akrog will never be half the troll that his sire was. If pathetic chest thumping is all he can do, then Nurbok has nothing to say to him. Goodbye, Chieftain. 17,000 men. To see hit hits by his hit points. The freaking boss. Indeed, look at the resistance, man. My god. Can a troll not rest for a moment? We talk to this guy, right? Let's go talk. We still have somebody. You are singing. Crumple. Trusted one crumple know to play songbone? Learn is more like a trusted one no egg. Crumb still has a long way to go. Oh, but it's so nice. No act like a lot. He come listen often from now. Remind me of the Witcher. Crumb would like that. Krasak told Crumb Akrog found another part of Zarak's cup. Man, is that I'm making him it too is. soft, they will man. Crumb more later. Anuk said there was a problem with the wounded. The wounded and the rotted ones. It's true. The long march through the jungle, the attack of the Tusk Hunters, the lack of food... Things are not looking good, Chieftain. They need something, or Ken will start dying by the dozen. But Crum has been thinking, and he has a plan. Lifegrass, the blessed herb. But it has died out. Crum thought so too, but a while ago, he heard rumors of a tribe in the desert called the Red Meadow. Apparently, they guard a shrine not so unlike Mugwa's cradle, and lifegrass grows around it. 
Crum sent a beak to make sure this tribe in the desert exists, and there is indeed a grove of red grass. As to what this grass is, and whether the tribe there are enemies or friends, Crum knows not. Please, Chieftain. The tribe cannot suffer more losses. Take a pack of warriors and go there. If there is life grass, it will save many lives. If not, at least the Moonkin tried. Grogwar is the best hexer of the tribe. Can he not do something for the wounded? For one or two kin, perhaps. But all of them? No. If Grogwar were that powerful, he would have cured the rot long ago. Life grass. Akrog has heard of it. What is it? It is a healing herb blessed by Magwa that can cure even the deepest of wounds. Like Magwa tears? No. Less powerful and different. The hex power in Magwa's tears cannot be used to heal because a troll's flesh is too weak to handle it. The life grass only has a little bit of Magwa's power. That is why the Moonkin can use it. Akrog sees. Perhaps the life grass could cure the rot, too. If Crum thought it could, he would have asked the chieftain to find the Red Meadow long ago. He will do his best, of course, but he doubts it will work. The crumple good healer. Not good enough, trusted one. Not good enough. There are not that many troll tribes on Urketh. Has Krum any idea who they might be? He has not. Neither does Gwangwa. Making a tribe camp in the desert sounds like a strange and foolish thing for trolls to do. Gwangwa speaks true. Even if there is life grass in this red meadow, what if the trolls who live there want not to share? Crumb prays to Magwa, it comes not to that. But if it does, well, the chieftain needs to make a choice. Just let them try to peace talk first. The Moonkin have lost so many, so they should not risk losing more. All right, Akrog will find this red meadow and see if they can get the tribe there to share their life grass. They will take Anub and a scouting pack with them, just in case there is a battle. Crum hopes it comes not to that. He thanks the chieftain, truly. Before they march, perhaps Akrog could speak to Tamer Julog beak friend before he leaves. He told Crum he has found a nesting place for the beaks, but he cannot get to it. All right. Sharp tusks and thick hide. Okay, let's research that thing. it let's make sure we research the good thing okay heart of the tribe blessed okay So this food is usable for uh, for research. What's this cheaper moon tablets? I assume there will be many RTS battles because otherwise it doesn't make sense to give all these research things.
It's actually like a schematic, but uh, they will all apply. Interesting. So I'm tempted to get the plus workers, because you can put one in towers if you need to. Don't need too many on resources. This one doesn't affect me that much, they only take one. If we go to the red meadow, <sighs> honestly, I like the decision factor, but I would also like to search for stuff, to do a lot of stuff, because I only, I will only play it once probably, and my first ending will be the. F only ending for me, you know, in uh, this campaign. Let's talk what to this guy. Akrog is happy to see Krasik is awake at last. How is he feeling? <sighs> Krasik feels weak, but he hopes the rest did him good. Akrog hopes so too. How long has Krasik been afflicted? Uh, Krasik remembers not. Rorak remembers. It is almost a moon since this old fool started to weaken. <laughs> and this grumpy foul tusk has been at Krasik's side ever since. Krasik is blessed to have such a great friend. Blessed or cursed? <laughs> Take it easy now. Save his strength for getting well, and for being a thorn in Korag's side. Typical Krasik. Brave in battle, and brave in sickness. Is Krasik in a lot of pain? Ah, Krasik has been through worse, Chieftain. That is not what he said to Grorag this morning. Krasik needs not pretend to Chieftain. He has been moaning and groaning for so long that Grorag told him to hurry up and get better or die, so Grorag's ears can have some peace. <laughs> Grorag always knows what Krasik needs to hear. But it was the same when Grorag nearly lost an arm, thanks to a pesky greenskin. <laughs> he went on and on and on about it. And Krasik knew how to cheer Grorag up. Gave Grorag the Greenskin's head on a pike. <sighs> Grorag would kill the Blood Rod if he could. So would Akrog. And maybe he can, if Magua is willing. The cursed Blood Rod. Akrog wishes he could destroy it. Chieftain is the Moonkin's leader, <laughs> not their healer. Krasik feels better knowing the tribe has a strong leader again. <coughs> a bit better, anyway. The blood rot must be beaten, somehow. Gorag, the Moonkin needs Krasik back. Akrog will do what he can to find a remedy. Akrog will not stand by and watch the Moonkin be destroyed. If the Chieftain could find it soon, that would be very nice. <laughs> it is good to see him, and Grorig too. Akrog is not surprised to see Grorag here in Krasik's time of need. Uh, Krasik has been trying to get rid of him for days. <coughs> Pretended to die once, but Grorag caught Krasik sneezing. 
and punched him in the arm. Pretended to die. Glorag was not convinced by that sorry act. Good excuse to punch Krasik, though. Akrog is not sure what a healer would say about hitting the sick. Has any troll a better idea? Well, a bit of violence <laughs> might be the cure. Gorig will keep trying, just in case. Sharp tusks and thick hide, until Akrog meets them again. Sharp tusks and thick hide, chieftain. Did we miss uh, anybody? Ah, chieftain. Mogwa praise. How can Crum help him? Oh my god, man. This might sound like a strange question, but how is Crum always in such high spirits? He is. It certainly seems that way. Hmm. Well, perhaps it is because Crum always tries to see the good, even where there is much bad. And he has much to thank Mogwa for, no? His beaks, his kin, an apprentice like Julok. And the hunters, and the rot, and the knowledge that only a few moons ago, the tribe lost almost half their kin and the greatest chieftain there ever was. Well, that is true. And of course, Crum knows about all this. And it gives him dark thoughts, like everyone else. It is just... Even in the darkest of days, there is something to be happy about, is there not? It is like an island in a sea. Even oh. if one is chased <laughs> by sharks, is it not better to think about the island rather than the sharks? While swimming as fast as one can, think, chieftain. Akrog surely must have an island or two, even right now, amid all this chaos. Or not. Speaking through, Akrog cannot think of anything right now. Well, Crumb is sure there is something. He just needs to look for it. Hmm. Well, Akrog will see. He thanks Crumb for his words. Of course. Oh my god, man. <laughs> How is the mood of the tribe? The chieftain cannot tell? He can, but Akrog is worried the kin show him not their true feelings. They always want to appear strong before the Chieftain. Hmm. Well, that is true. However, Crum thinks that as long as the kin still have the strength to show a strong face to the Chieftain, it means that they have not given up. Once they bother not to conceal their fear anymore, it means that things have grown truly dire. So they are not despairing yet? No. No, they are not. Crum feels this. Hmm. Well, Crum's words in Mogwa's ear. There is something Akrog has been meaning to ask. This bond Noag feels with Crum. Feels Crum it too. Why Big Blood speak of Noag like he not here? A good question. Perhaps they can speak of this later, Chieftain. Has Crumb come up with any new music for the songbone that Little Blood made for him? Oh, plenty. It is easier than Crumb thought. And so far, everyone is liking the sounds he makes with it. Well, either that, or they are too friendly to tell him otherwise. Hmm. Akrog has been wondering about this for a while. How is it that Crum knows so much about plants, herbs, and animals? How can he not? A troll spends every day of his life within them. And yet most of them cannot tell the difference between life grass and a bitter shroom. True. The truth is, Crum has always been different in that regard. Since he was a cub, he has felt like the plants and beasts are talking to him. So, 
Crum can talk to plants and animals. Not talk like Crum and the Chieftain are talking right now, but in a way, he can. In the end, Crum believes it comes down to choosing to listen. One can choose to see just green leaves and fur. Or, one can choose to see the living being behind it. Crumb decided to do the latter, and that is how he learned. Hmm. That sounds fascinating. Maybe Akrog should listen more. If he decides to do so, Crumb will join him and help. It is good for the mind, Chieftain. Especially when one carries such a heavy burden as he does. Perhaps when all this is over. Perhaps. Akrog wonders. What thinks Krom of the plan to resurrect Zarek's cub? Thinks he it is... Well... Foolish? Hmm. No. So he shares not Grungwar's worries? That it will simply devour the Moonkin once they free it? No. Zarak may have abandoned the trolls, but they are still his spawn, just like the cub is. This spawn runs deep. But the field dark was bred to destroy. That is what they say about him. Tell Crum, say the brittle bones not the same thing about troll kind? That they are crude, brutal creatures who only want to crush things? They do. There he has it. So, no. Crumb believes not that the cub will show the Moonkin any love, but perhaps fairness. He believes not this creature is as evil as everyone says it is. He believes it not. Hmm. Well, Akrog hopes Crumb is right. If only he could be sure. Only Magua can be sure of anything in this life. But there is no point in dwelling on it now, Chieftain. He has made his choice. So now, all they can do is wait and see. That is true. Well, Akrog must carry on now. It was good to talk to Krom, as always. Magua praise. Guys, so I haven't decided what I'm going to do. In that uh, direction. next. Okay. Let's see. Because I see they have a secondary Discussion tree after you talk you to them. Out. Great warrior Nervok. Akrog. This place. Thinks Nervok it is easily defended should the hunters find them. <laughs> Depends on how many hunters. But it is sturdy enough. Nervok will do his best. may sound odd, but Akrog wants Nurbok to know that he respects him for- Stop! What? That silly sweet talk. Nurbok is not Akrog's mating doll. He has no need for compliments. Just let Nurbok do his duty to the tribe, and all will be well. It is not clear to Akrog why two such different trolls became trusted ones. They are so... Different? <laughs> it is true. <laughs> well, that is exactly why they are trusted ones. Only a weak-minded troll looks for someone who supports every decision he makes. A good trusted one challenges his other on his views and thoughts, the way a good training battle challenges his skill with a crush stick. Hmm. That is all for now. Be moving. Man, it would be sad to lose him because he's strong. What is Chieftain, Anog here, they find the Master Scrapper. Not quite what he have in mind. The best. Please. Akrog thanks Anog for his advice. It was a good idea. Akrog thanks the Eye Master. Stay safe, Chieftain. Okay, who else do we want to talk? And we will finish this episode. This guy we talked. 
Zoska is listening. At his can talk to Zaska. Can talk to everybody basically. Right? Let's talk to the what kid. The big blood. He needs something. No. That is all for now. Let them march on. Hmm. Let's talk the to chieftain. Zaska. How can Grandma help? Oh. Oh yes. Uh... Akrog has some bone dust for Grungwar's plant. Hmm. Grungwar was about to ask. He saw Akrog collect it. Let him see. Ha! See? It works! The leaf unwilted, and its hex power grew stronger. It is true. Akrog can feel it. How can it work so fast? This is a blessed plant, Chieftain. They should find more of this, though. The more bone dust they find, the better. All right. And they always have a collection quest like this. Akrog wants to understand why Nurbak despises Akrog so much. Akrog knows Nurbak had high hopes of becoming chieftain after Sire Narjak. But is that all there is to it? Hmm. The truth is, Grangwa knows not. Well, he must have some idea. Grungwar and Nurbok have been trusted ones for... how long? Almost 400 moons now. 400 moons. To answer his question, perhaps it has to do with the way Nurbok chooses to respect. What is that supposed to mean? Well, ever since Grungwar has known Nurbok, he was all about earning respect through deeds. There's nothing Nurbok respects more than someone who earned his position in the tribe through strength and tenacity. And it is not only about judging others. Nurbok has the same thinking about himself. Early on, before he became the great warrior, he would spend every single day with his crush tick, practicing. And while he was not ashamed of getting wounded, he was ashamed when he thought it was a mistake easily avoided. Tusks, thinking about it. He was so restless, Chieftain. Every day he would wake up long before sunup and practice. And then a green cubling who hears voices in the wind comes along and becomes Chieftain just because he shares Narjak's blood. It is true. Grungwa knows Akrog has worked hard and bled a lot for the tribe. But he imagines that in Nerbok's eyes, it was not anywhere near enough to deserve such an honor. Can Grungwar think of anything Akrog could do to convince Nurbok he is worthy? Nothing more than what Grungwar already said. Be a leader who is deserving. And from what Grungwar can tell, Akrog seems to be on the right path. Madman, Brittlebone plan or not, Nurbok will come around, Chieftain. There is nothing he treasures more than the tribe. And the moment he realizes Akrog feels the same, he will learn to respect Akrog. Grangwa can feel it. Mm. Akrog believes Grangwa never told him. Where learned he to read? Perhaps the chieftain asked before, but Grangwa wanted not to tell. Is that right? Well, it is true. But Grangwa need not tell if you would rather not. Akrog understands. No, no, Akrog is chieftain now. And Grangwa feels comfortable to share this. Just understand that he might leave out certain details. It is a long and dark tale. Of course. Well then, let them get this over with. Grangwa was a slave of the Brittle Bones. The Dark Elves of Shaldun, to be precise. Grangwa was a slave? That is... Shocking. Disgraceful. Grangwa knows. Yet it happened. He was a freshly born cubling back then, and he was on the way back to the tribe camp with four eyes who had taken him to a shrine of Magwa for her blessing, one of them being his sire. They accidentally stumbled into a dark elf camp, and... Well, being well, at scouts, they, took them it was... they killed Grungwa's sire, and one of the eyes, Barnak, 
and took Grangwa and the other eye with him. Lakrog is sorry to hear that. It is fine. So, he was a slave. The other eye, Maka, was made one. And Grangwa never saw her again. Oh, Grangwa, on the other hand, was given to some dark elf chieftain, an Archon, as they call them. Zahar Tuwar was his name. And that dark elf Archon taught Grungwar how to read? Hmm, <laughs> far from it, no. That dark elf Archon tossed Grungwar into a dungeon with a dozen other interesting specimens and forgot about him. But that is not the point of this story. What matters is that Grangwa grew very weak in that dungeon. You will not lie, Chieftain. It was a dark time. There was no ray of sunlight, and every day felt the same. Like a black swamp that went on forever. It would have probably been the end of Grangwa, if not for that one servant. A doe she was. To this day, Grangwa knows her name not. A brittle bone doe helped him. Uh, at first, she only brought him food every other day. But after a while, she came more often. It is shameful to admit these feelings for our brittle bone, but Grandma was so grateful to her. He wanted to thank her, but he could not, because he had not even learned to speak. So she taught him with scratching and pointing. Scratching and pointing. That was enough for Grungwa to learn so much. Well, the chieftain must remember that Grungwa was in that dungeon for a very long time. With each of her visits, he started to repeat the sounds she made. And he studied the scratchings in the dust until they made sense. He learned only simple things at first. But with time, the words got more complex. And she even brought him simple dark elven stories to read. It was a strange time. Uh, looking back on it now, Grangwa often wonders if it all really happened. But it did. And Grangwa's knowledge is the totem of that. And how was Grangwa freed? That is another painful long story. And one Grangwa would rather not share right now. He hopes the chieftain understands. Hmm. And what about that kind Brittlebone servant? Saw Grungwa her ever again? No, because she died. The Archon had her killed when he found out what she had done. They're vile beings, these dark elves, chieftain. Even worse than the Tusk Hunters. But let them not talk more about it, no. Grangwa is... He feels like he has told enough. All right. Lakrog understands. Hmm. Lakrog has been wondering about this a long time. How decided Grangwa and Nurbok to form the Bond of Trust? Hmm. That is a difficult question. Grangwa is not certain they ever truly decided it. When two trolls go through enough together, something like that simply happens. That is not quite true, is it? One must still decide to form the bond of trust. One must ask the question, and the other must agree it is true. But the kinship and the trust that grows on its own. So Grungwar and Nurbok have been through much together. Oh, far too much. Even the greatest warrior needs the support of an elder to mend his wounds. And without Nurbok's mastery of the crush stick, he would have died many times. Nurbok was death, and Grungwar was life. And together, nothing could stand in their way. When was the first time Grungwar and Nurbok fought together? Can Grungwar remember? Oh, he can. It is hundreds of moons ago, but the images are still there, clear in Grungwar's mind. A pack of greenskins ambushed the Moonkin while they were feasting in Magwa's honor. Taken by surprise, the warriors were slow to react, 
but not Nairbok. His crush stick was in his hand as soon as the Greenskins attacked. So the Greenskins snuck past the eyes? No. They killed them. Every single one. It was a well-planned attack, and even though the old Eye Master at the time did everything right, the Greenskins were simply too quick and too cunning. Akrog's sire, Nodjak, was away on a hunt, and that is probably why they picked that night. Looking back, Granwa realizes that battle might have well been the end of the Moonkin, if not for Nairbok. He fought back the first pack of the Greenskins, and when they retreated, he ran after them. Alone? Alone. It was reckless and bold, but even with his strength and skill, Grungwa knew Nebok would not survive. So he followed them, even though the kin all urged him to stay back. And they won. They killed all those Greenskins by themselves. Ha! <laughs> not even Narjak could have done that. No, they killed not all of them. But Nairbok's crush stick and Grangwa's totems bought the rest of the tribe time to prepare. The other warriors joined in, and the Greenskins fled. After the battle, Grangwa and Nairbok always stayed together in a fight. There was not even anything ceremonial about it. They just did, because it felt right. Alone, they were one great warrior and one powerful elder. Together, they were unstoppable. Ah. <sighs> Listen to old Grungwar ramble on. That comes with age, he supposes. One prefers to dwell in the days when the hide was less thin and the tusks less brittle. It was quite interesting, though. Mm. Akrog understands that depending on each other in a battle can form that kind of bond. But is the trust still there after the battle? Well, certainly not for everyone, but for Grangwa and Nairbok it was, it is true. The more time they spent with each other, the more they realized that it was not only in battle where they enhanced each other so well. Nairbok is fierce when Grangwa is sometimes too reluctant, and Grangwa is calm when Nairbok is sometimes too hot-headed. Come to think of it, it is not too different from Zaska and Akrog. Hmm. That is true. Mm. Akrog understands. And who decided to strike the Bond of Trust then? Was it Grungwar? No, it was Nerbak. After the death of his sires. He lost his sires? Oh, it is another dark tale. Nerbak's sires were killed by brittle bone hunters and left to rot under the sun. Every troll is kin. But Grungwa must not tell Akrog that losing the same blood often hurts worse, no matter how honorable a troll is. For Nairbok, it was terrible, and he blamed himself. His sires had been very old by then, unable to defend themselves, and he had been out protecting some Moonkin workers. He had not even the chance to say farewell. Hmm. Akrog imagines Grungwa helped him through his grief. He tried his best. Grungwa will not lie. It was not easy. Nerbok refused to talk and got angry quickly. But Grungwa just stayed and waited, ready to listen. It took a long time, but finally, Nerbok spoke. What said he? Many things, which Grungwa will keep to himself. But he remembers the two words Nerbok ended on. And he always will. Never again. Nairbok swore never to let another kin be killed by a brittle bone. And that was it. A day later, Nairbok asked Grungwa to be his trusted one. Grungwa accepted without batting an eyelid. Hmm. Akrog sees. He thanks Grungwa for sharing this. Gladly. Anything to help Akrog see that Nairbok is not the mean-spirited rot-tusk Akrog thinks he is. Akrog never said he was a rot-tusk. But he thought it. And it is fine. Grangwa would probably feel the same way if he were in Akrog's hide. Just remember, there's often more to a kin than meets the eye. Okay, guys. That is it for now. 
One more. One more effort. What? I can talk to myself? By Mugwa's sparkling udders, the chieftain deems the small task worthy of a conversation. How can Sasuke help? He's being less of a fool mouth for possibility. Afraid not. That sickness is as incurable as the rot. Now, say, what is on his mind? We are doing this one also. And uh, then we close the episode. Akrog just wanted to see how Sasuke is feeling. <laughs> Hungry, annoyed, Man, he's and really... ugly. A perfectly normal day then, right? He's really complex about that. Zaska seems to put a lot of trust into the stranger's plan. Zaska does? That is the first time he heard that. Well, he proposed the plan, no? That is right. But that means not that Zaska blindly trusts the stranger and the cub. Thing is, if a troll is drowning in beak shit, then he would be a fool to refuse a helping hand only because it has blisters, no? That is a strange comparison. Even a master hunter sometimes misses a throw. Look, the point is, the Moonkin have run out of options as much as old Grungwar refuses to admit it. Zazka is curious about this cub and this temple, that is true. But he is as nervous about all this as trusted one is. Hmm. All right then. Zazka seems to like this place, no? Akrog has seen him admire it. Well, admire is a big word, but it is true. He cannot help but respect Brittlebone craftsmanship. Imagine what it takes to build a place like this. And here the Moonkin are, slapping their crude shelters onto the stone. <laughs> it is like sprinkling shit onto a masterful totem. Akrog would not go so far as calling the troll shelter shit, but Saska has a point. Of course he does, but worry not. Saska wants not to stay here forever. The home of the Moonkin is out there, in the jungles and the swamps, not up on a mountain. Very true. <laughs> work, work, work. Seriously, guys. So, Saska, tell him, how is it being the chieftain's trusted one? Oh. It is everything Zazka dreamed it would be. The honor, the excitement, all those Moonkin does clamoring for Zazka's attention. Oh my Good God, to hear. Man. Tusks, would Zazka have thought that Akrog would be chieftain one day? Honest answer, he did. Truly? How so? Because Akrog was the only one who took a stand for Zazka when the other cubs shunned him. Zazka makes it sound as though Akrog did that without batting an eyelid. It took him moons to step up. But he did. And Zazka will never forget it. Zazka is no elder. But if he has learned one thing, then it is that most kin are twigs in the wind. They bend in whichever direction it blows. Had the Chrome Trolls not approved of the cub shunning Zazka, they would not have done it. They just did what everyone else did. Because defying the wind takes strength. In that way, Zaska even has a bit of admiration for Nurbok. He would hate Zaska even if everyone else accepted him. He is an insufferable rot tusk, but at least he has a spine, as does Akrog. Hmm. Zaska makes it sound as though only Akrog helped Zaska and not the other way around. When Akrog got trapped in that cave, Zaska helped him out of there. It is true, but it is not the same. It is easy being the trusted one of someone who is more respected. The other way around is what takes courage. So, no, Zaska was not surprised Narjak chose Akrog as chieftain. Akrog always had it in him, and Zaska saw that, just like Narjak did. And here they are. And here they are.
May this bond of trust last forever. It rotten better. Now enough of the sweet words, all right? They have a god to revive. This may sound odd, but Akrog just wanted to tell him he is sorry about all those kin who shun Zaska. They are fools. <sighs> anything else? Said Akrog anything wrong? No. Just nothing new. Seriously, Akrog. How often have they had this talk? Zaska gives not a beak shit about those fools. So let them foul talk and sneer all they want. All right, if Zaska says so. He does, but he appreciates the concern, all right? Concern is a big word for a troll. I think worry would be more appropriate in this uh, discussion. Akrog has to go. Sasuke <clears throat> will not stop him. All right. Oh my God, man! I think we passed two hours, right? Hmm. Akrog is listening. Okay, we will stop over here. Oh, let's get this reward now. Okay. Okay, so we have to upgrade it to legendary level, I guess. So, how can... He can actually seriously, but he doesn't want it over here, right? Let me check. Anything changes? Mm, I think he it gives more focus. Let's see. Yes, it gives. No, it gives. Let me see. Wow. It gives plus 16. It gives plus 8 to health region. But we need him to use other stuff, so... I'll uh, think about it, I'll load a save and uh, check stuff out, so I don't do it uh, in the... Oh, and it adds intelligence also, see? So yes, I will check some stuff out, I'll load a save and uh, look around. So I do not do all that thinking on the record, okay? Uh, we'll stop over here, I don't know what will we do next, I haven't decided, I'll think about it. Okay, thanks for watching guys and bye bye.